Have you ever had a pair of shoes or boots that you love, but they just started to fall apart? I mean, what do you do next? Throw them away, right? Well, here recently, I had one of my favorite pair of boots, the heel has fallen off, and my wife had one of the little knobs or rubber mounts on the bottom of her heels fall off. Well, normally I'd throw these away, but I recently heard about Aqua Seal Shoe Repair, and it's supposed to fix both of these, so let's give this a shot. According to the back of this packet, it's supposed to be permanent, waterproof, flexible, and abrasion resistant. I'm going to first start with the boots. Uh, the thing is, is the instructions say that if it's non-fabric surface, I need to scuff it up with sandpaper. And unfortunately, it's kind of tight to get in there. So I have a feeling I need to rip the rest of the heel off and then reattach the whole thing. So let's see. Oops. Okay, the front half seems to be on there pretty good. So I guess I'm just going to try and... Uh... Oh, no, there it goes. There we go. So in case you've ever wondered what the inside of a boot heel looks like, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> First I'm going to go in here and take a brush and try and clean out some of the debris, just still loose stuff that's in here so it doesn't just get in the way. And then we'll use some sandpaper on it. I'm just using some 60 grit here so I can get in here and make sure I roughed up this rubber really well. It's then recommended to use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on all the contact points in case there's any residues. This has also helped getting off some of the excess residue that was on there from before. Now I'm just going to apply some of this around all the contact points here. Let's see. Oh, it's clear. For some reason I was thinking it was going to be black, but hey, clear works too. I guess that's good for any color shoe. Now once I have glue all the way around the whole section there and all the contact points that I can see, I'm gonna take our boot and wedge it back into place here. Making sure that we get that little cushion back in place. And once you have everything glued and repositioned, they suggest clamping it or maybe putting rubber bands around it. Something to hold it nice and tight together so that as it cures, it'll be attached fully. I got a bunch of old rubber bands here that we're going to try and carefully wrap around this thing. I have noticed that at the front here, it's not fully like grabbing. So I'm probably going to have to add a clamp or something to make sure the front of that is fully down and the same thing about the back of noticing it doesn't want to fully go down so we're gonna have to figure that one out too. These are not steel toed boots so I didn't want to mess up the front nose of this so I added some craft sticks to help distribute the clamping pressure and then I put a clamp on it. And now it's a waiting game. We're supposed to give this 24 hours to cure so let's give it some time and uh, we'll check back in on it. Now let's give this a shot on the heels. It's a little hard to see but there's only about a quarter of an inch missing here of the rubber so this should be pretty easy to replace. It's recommended to use some clear tape to make a dam exactly around where you want to fill in. So let's do that first. Next step is to level out the shoe. And this one is really difficult because of these straps. It's hard to keep it from moving around. I think I might have to put like a clamp here just to hold it in place. Very carefully trying not to get any of this on any other part of the shoe. We're going to try and get it down into that tape right there. This is a little challenging. I have a feeling that I have too much in there, but that's okay. We'll uh, trim off whatever is excess later. Now it's recommended to give this 24 to 48 hours to cure because it is so thick and we'll check back in on it later as well. And once you're done gluing, it's recommended to stick the remaining part of the glue in the freezer for storage. As mentioned earlier, the boots only cried about 24 hours to cure and the heels about 48. I ended up giving 72 hours because I had a busy weekend and they just sat. So now let's take a closer look. Let's get these rubber bands and clamps off. All right, I did get a little bit of residue on the side of my boot here. I'm not overly concerned about that. It is boots. Let's see if we can flex this at all. That seems like a really nice curing job wow it's it's not uh it's not showing any kind of cracking that i can tell by squeezing it really hard now i do want to point out right here where i have a little bit of the glue squeeze out there's a bunch of bubbles that have i guess dried within the gluing process or curing process 
So, I mean, these are boots, I'm not worried about it, but if you're worried about a little bit of bubbles showing, then uh, you might want to take that into consideration. And the same seems to be true right here. I thought at first it was like a little bit of sawdust inside my boots. Nope, it's little fine bubbles within the glue. Okay, I guess the ultimate is to, let's put these on and test them out. All right, I got the boots on. Let's test this out, bending them a few times, see if, if they're gonna do anything weird. So far, they're comfortable. Seems to be on pretty strong. Let's hit them a few times. Looks pretty good. Everything's staying together. I guess we'll only know for the long run, but for right now, that glue is working very well. Moving on to the heels, we gotta take this tape off. And it is, feels like it's fully cured, but it is rubbery. It also might be a little bit hard to see, but this is full of bubbles as well. They're a little bit bigger than what was on the boots, but there are quite a few. And since it's clear, we're probably gonna have to color it black to match the rest of the heel. Also, the newly fixed heel is now a little bit taller than the original, so we're gonna have to trim this down. Now we need to make sure that the heel here is as straight as possible with the rest of the shoe. And so we are trying to line everything up with my workbench, these lines that I have here. And then I'm just going to use a razor blade to cut this off. And there we go. Now taking a closer look, you might be able to tell that the new heel it's a little bit, maybe a millimeter or two longer than the original. The original was a little bit harder of a rubber than this. This flexes just a little bit, so I figured it'd probably be smart to leave it a hair longer. Here's a little tip my wife showed me. If you have a set of black heels and they're scuffed up, or in this case, they have a wrong discoloration on them, if you take a black magic marker and you carefully go over the area, you can get them close enough that they won't be noticeable. So that's what we're going to do here. Now, I don't wear heels, so I'm not gonna test these out. Plus, my feet are way too big for these. But in any case, I hope these last my wife for many more years.